<laughs> Sustainability and resilience. Will technology save us? Have you ever felt like throwing your phone out the window or slamming your laptop shut forever? And ever, ever? Technology can help us connect and be efficient or get us overwhelmed and stressed out. Like me 13 years ago during my PhD when I burned out. Because I'm a stubborn German, I still became a software engineering professor plus a certified yoga teacher. In this talk, I'll show you the bridge in between the two. From a breathing technique to a sustainability tool, we know from research that stress leads to our body being in survival mode. It is fight or flight or freeze. When that happens, we tend to disconnect for example, from our values. When I'm really stressed, I have a harder time being kind. Can you relate? How do we change that? We get back into our bodies. We reboot our nervous system. And we reconnect with our intentions. That's the latest three years of my research on a technique to gently restore the nervous system, to increase well-being in our bodies during technology development. Birgit, why there? Because we unconsciously embed our values into the systems we design. And these systems happen to run our world. When I speak about well-being, developers tend to listen because I'm seen as one of theirs. I might call it biohacking for some of them. Would you think that taking a deep breath could lead to more sustainable technology development? Let's try it out with you as technology users. I love experiments. Are you willing to join me? Here is the secret sauce. We start with a breathing technique to come into presence. Then we reflect on a question about your use of technology. And then we choose an action for alignment. First part, the presence. This breathing technique, according to research, is the quickest and most effective way to relax your nervous system. We take a double inhale and a slow exhale. The first inhale goes into the belly. The second inhale goes into the chest. That kicks your relaxation response, and then we slowly exhale. Have you ever seen a little child calm themselves down after they cried really hard? They go something like, <gasps> <sighs> same principle. Let me show you, and then we do it together. First inhale into the belly, second into the chest, and then exhale. Now do it with me. We'll do two breaths together. Inhale belly, inhale chest, exhale. Second one, inhale belly, inhale chest, exhale. How do you feel now? A bit more present, more grounded, energized? Good. Welcome back. We get to the second part, the question about technology. Think of how you use technology in your daily life, your phone, your tablet, your computer, and why? What is your intention? Maybe it's community connection. Maybe it is time efficiency. What is one thing that currently gets in the way of your intention? 
like checking email first thing in the morning or getting sucked into social media at night. For me, I get sidetracked while writing research articles by a random idea. I want a pet, maybe a parrot, and then I wander off researching that. The short-term impact is that I procrastinate. Long-term, I would not publish any articles, except maybe about parrots. This is where we get to step three, the alignment action. Come back to your intention. Maybe it was the community connection or time efficiency. What is one change you commit to right now? Some specific habit so you can align your actions better with your intentions. For me, I do focused writing tasks offline and research other ideas later on. Which habit will you replace? Bravo. You have successfully calmed down your nervous system with a breathing technique, reflected on a question about the use of technology, and chosen an aligned action for improvement. I have sneakily gotten you grounded and paying attention to what I say. In my research work with companies, I do this for a longer list of questions for both the use and the development of technology. For example, how do we make sure users trust the system? Or what happens if millions of people start using the system a lot? We then analyze the impacts, put them into an overview diagram, and recommend actions to the companies. For example, doing additional user interviews, or moving to green servers. Birgit, why do we need that? Because we want to live sustainably, and we have been discounting the side effects of technology. In the environment, we see collapsing ecosystems. One contributor to environmental pollution is electronic waste. Those old phones and computers either sit in a dark drawer at home, or if we recycle them, which should be good, right? They mostly end up in toxic piles in Africa, China, or India. Mountains of it. For the social impacts, we see a degrading society. For example, in how people sometimes treat each other on social media. There are increasing teenage suicide rates due to cyberbullying and unhealthy media consumption. It is designed to be addictive. Do you know anyone who gets a bit fidgety when they are without their phone for too long? To find such side effects earlier, my colleagues and I have developed a tool that looks at the impacts of software systems over time. We have applied it at several universities around the globe and in different industry sectors. By the way, it's free for everyone. It's called SUSAF, S-U-S-A-F. -S it's short for Sustainability Analysis Framework. It is a structure to help think of potential outcomes. It lets stakeholders from development and management forecast potential impacts. We use two concepts to structure that, the dimensions of sustainability and the orders of impact. I'll explain both of them using the example of post-it notes. We start with the dimensions. There are five of them. The individual dimension is a person taking care of themselves over the course of their lifetime. I might write something down on a post-it note so I remember. Call grandma. In the social dimension, we talk about living in community. We use post-its to communicate and plan. Yoga tomorrow at six? In the environmental dimension, we talk about the resources we use and the waste we create. 
the economic dimension is about making sales with the post-its and getting a return on investment. And the technical dimension is about how to make that product last and the post-its just sticky enough. Those are the five dimensions. Now, where we used to fall short in technology development is considering long-term impacts. If we were to use post-its for all of our communication, we would have them all over our walls, all of our windows, no priorities, confusion, overwhelm, and a lot of waste created. Other societies look further. Native American tribe leaders look at the impact of their decisions seven generations down the road. Can we do that for our decisions? Life changes so fast now. Maybe not seven generations, but here is a concept that'll help. The three orders of impact used in SUSAF. There are direct impacts, like the resources we use, for example, the trees that turn into paper for the post-its, and the waste created. And that is known as life cycle analysis established. Now we take it further. The indirect impacts are what the post-its enable us to do. They could bring efficiency in getting work done. They could bring joy, if it's a love note, or harm in case of a passive aggressive, the dishes are still dirty, note next to the sink. Finally, systemic impacts have the biggest scale. Maybe some of you know the butterfly effect. It's a theory that says if a butterfly flaps its wings on one side of the planet, that could cause a hurricane on the other side of the planet. So if millions of people use post-its to plan and communicate a lot, we can amplify that efficiency or joy or harm or we could get completely overwhelmed by the sheer amount of communication if overused. Post-its everywhere! Can you see the parallel to email these days? Here's what works with the framework and what doesn't. Companies give positive feedback to us. Recently, a global tech company reached out to say, we found this research of yours on the internet and we're applying it. Great. A Finnish software development company uses our five dimensions on their website. Yes. Companies are excited to see the impacts of their systems clearly labeled. Technology is not neutral. And now they see the human factor in the design decisions. However, when we get in touch with companies later on, say half a year after the workshop, and ask them about which actions they implemented, we hear that it is still pending because there were other urgent priorities. When I last called one of my collaborators, they were stressed out about a bunch of other due dates. In that case, the insights on sustainability are not taken anywhere. How do we work with that? Deep breath. By coming back into presence and checking whether our day-to-day -day priorities align with our long-term intentions, what I want you to take away from my TEDx talk today is there are short and long-term impacts of technology. The SUSA framework can help you find them. You can download the workbook for free. Try it out. We also applied a breathing practice to relax and come into presence. You know how to do that breathing practice now. It saved me back in 2009 to recover from my burnout. Do it 15 minutes a day, it might change your life. You can even use it to help your kids calm down after a temper tantrum or to help your colleagues at work reset after an intense meeting. Will technology save us? Wrong question. Are we 
going to save ourselves? And could technology help? It will. If we take a deep breath and remember to align our day-to-day -day actions with our long-term intentions. Thank <laughs> you.